Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that are joining us on live stream here on the side camera here, as well as those of you that are watching uh, uh, via YouTube once this is actually posted here. And I hope uh, that I can get this to where the people on live stream will be able to catch this. I know we've been having trouble. Tonight, live stream would not even allow me to log into my account from the computer. That's just how serious uh, we're being censored in everything that we're doing here, but you're fixing to see what's really going on and what CNN will never tell you, and that's what we're about to dig into now. It is a serious situation that's happening over in the Middle East. Uh, it's a very serious situation going on around uh, Russia, NATO. Uh, as I've gotten, several of you have sent me the articles there, how that the United States for the first time has done what the NATO charter never would allow to do, and that's the aggressive posturing that the United States is doing, leading the way, surrounding Russia completely, and she is totally uh, surrounded by all of the countries around her, or by, by NATO's powers there, it is like cornering a wild animal that's about ready to come out fighting. And I want to share with you some of the things that are going on in the news that we have done some research on on Russian news media for you to let you know some of the, just some of the reasons why this is escalating into a major conflict. And of course, it is always over money. It's always over the oil. But it's even deeper. And what we're going to get into here in just a little bit may blow your mind away uh, because you're going to find out why there must be a war with Russia. There is a major religious re reasonings for this. It's not my thought. I can guarantee you that. I mean, I believe they should be allowed to be free and live the way they choose to live. But there is a religious reason behind it. And the Vatican is very much pushing for this war with Russia. And you're going to find this out in just a few moments. But let's first look at some of the reasons why we are at the brink of war as I speak now. On May 31st, 2016, this article here appeared in technoblog.ru. They, re, they were reporting it from uh, Yaakov uh, Tzalel, his uh, uh, article in globes.co.il. All right, many, I found many Russian languages that reported this. It says Israeli media participation of the uh, Gazprom in the Leviathan, a large scale terrorist attack. Uh, that's the way Yaakov uh, looked at this as being that if he did participate, it would be like having a large scale terrorist attack. Now, it's not so much the reason I want to focus on that, but what I want to focus on is the fact that Gazprom was given the right to actually participate in the Leviathan oil field. But those of you that may not know, Gazprom uh, pulled back away from this after the Israeli government uh, actually signed a deal, the courts that is, for the big giant, uh, the, the oil giants, um, uh, Noble Oil, and, uh, and the Derek, of course, Derek was going to be involved no matter what, because that is an Israeli uh, company there, but Noble, who is also in part with some of the Vatican's big oil companies as well, but they ended up getting the oil rights there. But let me, let's go into this article a little bit. Investments with the Russian gas problem in the Israeli gas field, Leviathan gas giant, will partly solve the problem of lack of funding. Uh, but the good news ends, laments Israeli journalist Yaakov Salel in Globes.co.il's uh, edition. As noted in the article, he states this, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made a great gift to the Russian President Vladimir Putin on the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Russian-Israeli diplomatic relations. The Russian-speaking appointed Av uh, Avigador uh, Lieberman as a Minister of Defense. Those of you that don't know, he is a Russian-born native. He speaks the language fluently, very close friends with uh, uh, Vladimir Putin as well. Uh, this contributes to the fact that Gazprom has been approved for the development of the Israeli gas fields. Okay, so they got approved for it, but they backed out of this. Let's go further in the article. We will ensure the absence of provocation against the gas fields by Hezbollah and Hamas, said, uh, 
And this is what Putin was saying recently. The second channel commentator Ehud Yari, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Ehud Yari said this, with, uh, with reference to the information of some knowledgeable sources who noted Putin's interest in a conversation with Netanyahu. Uh, int uh, excuse me. Then the Russian leader was interested in the Israeli gas fields, according to the rumors. He said the author of the article, Putin, said, "With us, no one would dare mess, or no one would dare mess with us." Is what he's saying there. Uh, it goes on to state in the same article, as a result, the author of the publication makes an unexpected conclusion. In his opinion, Gazprom's participation in the development of the Israeli gas fields would be akin to a terrorist attack, and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, that of a strategic scale, as it can change the geopolitical situation of Israel in the region and the country transform from a U.S. ally and in, uh, into that of a Russian vassal. In other words, a Russian uh, sub-state is what that would be. Now, this is what the, uh, the Israeli journalist was like in this too. Now, the strange thing is, though, that Gazprom no longer was interested in the Israeli gas uh, field development. And that came out on uh, Uyaz.com on May the 21st. They had backed out of the deal. But the question is, is why? Why did they back out? because the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu had made sure that they would have the deal, but then they suddenly back out. Well, there's a reason why. There was a press release on the Global Newswire on June the 2nd of 2016. Noble Energy receives plan of development approval for Leviathan Field offshore is, uh, of Israel. No wonder why they backed out. Because now, Noble, and of course, Noble's been bidding for a long time to get it, so has Russia, but Noble Energy, just like other uh, Vatican-ran energy companies around there, keep trying to push Russia out of the whole program there. But don't forget, Russia does have ties with Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank and off of Gaza as well. Is he just going to sit back quietly while all the other oil giants of the world push uh, Russia around? I don't think so. I don't think so, friends. Uh, anyway, Houston on June 2nd, 2016, Global Newswire, Noble Energy Incorporated, uh, today announced that it has been received approval from the Petroleum Commissioner and the Ministry of National Infrastructure, Energy, and Water Resources for the development of the Leviathan Project offshore of Israel. So this is why Russia backed out of there. Uh, they already knew that this was coming down. Even though they had agreed at one point to do it, they had actually backed out of it uh, as early as May 21st. So they knew that they were being underhanded. And I believe that there was a big issue. It was, you know, one side you had the politicians like Netanyahu was trying to get the deal for Russia, and yet the court, on the other hand, was working in behind the scenes to make sure that the U.S. got it, which, of course, like I said, there is a cooperation between a great Vatican-ran company, Shell Oil, and Noble, that is. Uh, but anyway... Uh, very interesting here. The first stage of the development of Leviathan Field in Israel. An article on uh, Wednesday, June 22, 2016. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the amount of undiscovered, technically re uh, recoverable reserves, Leviathan, is a total of a little less than 3.5 trillion cubic meters of natural gas and 1.7 billion barrels of oil, presumably under the gas field at the depth of 5.8 kilometers, is an oil pool, the potential of which with, with, uh, with a probability of 17% is 3 billion barrels at a depth of 7.2 uh, kilometers and perhaps even lies about 1.2 billion barrels of oil. Now, of course, like I found this interesting photo online with, uh, it looks like Pope Benedict there, uh, money is evil, give it to us though, is exactly what they say, and that's who's going to get this oil deal to begin with, because the Vatican has a lot of ties with Israel, and they don't have that great of ties with uh, uh, with Russia, that's one thing's for sure, and they're going to get everything they possibly can for themselves. Anyway, though, it gets really serious, though, as I was putting this article together. Um, this came up here. 
June 22nd, 2016. It's not a very old article. It was only a few hours old here. Putin, Russia will uh, will for, will be forced. Uh, excuse me. Russia will force response to NATO's actions. That's the best translation I could do for you on this particular article here. This is a breaking news story. Now, I know RT News was saying something already a little bit about this earlier today. RT was reporting that Russia, after speaking to the Duma, which is the photograph I'm using here, is where he speaks to the uh, Russian parliament there. Uh, the president was making it quite clear uh, that Russia's had just about all they can take now because of NATO on their borders like they are doing. Uh, as I said to you in the news yesterday, German officials have stated that it is uh, th that Russia should pay, pay a close attention to what's going on because it appears that NATO is planning a preemptive strike against Russia. Now, President noted in the intensification of the aggression actions of the alliance at the country's borders. Okay, the President Putin noted the intensification of aggression aggressive actions of the alliance, the NATO alliance that is, at his country's border. Moscow will be forced to respond to the, aggression, to the aggressive actions of the North Atlantic Alliance at the borders of Russia. This was stated by President Vladimir Putin in a speech at the State Duma. That happened just uh, hours ago. While we are again as it was before World War II, we do not see a positive response, he states. On the contrary, NATO intensifies its aggressive rhetoric and strengthens its aggressive actions near our borders, said the head of state, President Putin. He goes on. Earlier, NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg announced the increase and the number of patrols and exercises conducted on the eastern borders of the alliance. He said that planning a major increase in NATO since the Cold War, in particular the battalions of the alliance, will be located in the Baltic states and Poland. Permanent representatives of Russia to NATO, Alexandra Grushko, noted that in some EU areas of cooperation in the alliance felt, an, felt anti-Russia orientation. According to him, the policy of NATO's expansion contradicts the real security needs and creative dividing lines and, and, are, and, and are creating dividing lines in Europe. And I'm seeing that as well in the news. We are seeing people in France, seeing uh, politicians in Germany, uh, both speaking against what's going on. One German official called it a saber rattling. Uh, of course, Stoltenberg, uh, uh, Jens Stoltenberg jumps up and says, we're not saber rattling, but they are. It's a very serious situation. And it's not just a serious situation for Europe. It's a very serious and very volatile situation for the United States as well. Because one thing's for sure, if they do a preemptive strike, and that, by the way, is also on North Korea. It's about to happen as well. North Korea, even Russia has said to North Korea, you're really putting yourself in a bad situation with all these threats of being attacked. Uh, and, he's, he, and Russia has even stated that, you know, the, you know, NATO would justifiably have the right to attack North Korea because of their constant threats of using nuclear weapons on the United States or South Korea. And it does seem very imminent that that is about to take place, and I can certainly see why it will. It will also give the United States another stronghold on Russia's southern border. So will the United States uh, and NATO, their allies, hold off on doing a preemptive strike against Russia or not? I don't think so. All right, now I said earlier today in our own broadcast that, that the... Papacy, they're doing things that you have no idea of. You have to understand, the Pope of Rome knows that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for those that don't know Hebrew, that he preached three and a half years to the Jewish people. He was cut off. There's actually other books, the Vatican knows of this, in some of the books, it is suggested that Yeshua fulfilled half of Daniel's 70th week, the last week, when he was cut off in the midst of the week. 
Now, I'm not saying yay or nay in that myself. I'm just trying to share with you information that I am aware of about this. I think that the Vatican is intending on trying to fake a millennial reign. I've stated that for some time. I believe that even more so now as I'm watching what's going on. The Pope of Rome is trying to bring the entire world under his own authority. He is using the United Nations, the NATO forces, as his own military to achieve this purpose. Russia has not gone along with the papacy. They have never allowed the Pope of Rome to come to their country. Now, I think that it was an open invitation by President Putin for him to come, but he will not go to a country that he has not conquered. That's according to Alberto Rivera, a former Jesuit of the Catholic Church, who has stated so. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is I think I see a connection with what's happening, even with the possibility that a war is about to break out. Remember what the Pope said uh, not too long ago, back before 2015's Christmas uh, timing, he said this will probably be the last Christmas as you know it. He expected that there be a war-torn country afterwards. Okay? Now Putin is realizing that he is about to be attacked. Or are they trying to get Putin to strike first? You know, Putin does not want a war. I, I really believe that. I don't believe for a moment that this man wants a war with NATO. But I also believe that if he ends up in a war with NATO, he's going to have to strike hard. And I'm not siding for Russia or United States. I'm not, I'm not on either side of this. I stand for Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. That's where I make my stand at. Okay. But I still see, I see things that are wrong and I see things that are right, okay? And the wrong in this is that NATO has no right to attack Russia. They have no right to be on Russia's borders. We have no right as the United States of America to be working with NATO to go over there to aggressively incite the violence with Russia. The people, Russia has never, they've not come after none of us. If anything, they have done one thing. They've tried to protect the Christian people that are living in the Middle East from the aggressors that, that the Obama administration took and built up a massive army of Muslims to kill off the Christians of the Middle East. And you know why they wanted to kill them off? You know why the Pope of Rome does nothing about it? Because it's actually the Russian Orthodox Church that has more influence in the country there like Syria with the Christian community. It's not the Catholic Church. It's, they, have, they have more power with the Sunnis, not the Christians of the Middle East. They're Coptic Christians. They're not the Pope's Christians, you know, so they're okay. They're, they don't go in line with the, what the Vatican wants, so they can just kill all them off. But see, what did, what, did, what did Putin do? Putin has actually gone there and tried to save those people from annihilation. God bless him for that. Doesn't make him a, you know, somebody special, but at least he has enough courage to go and stand for those people that are being murdered by the Obama administration's led campaign to kill off every Christian in the Middle East. They ain't gonna like me saying it, but I'll tell you just like it is. All right, now, something else I want to bring up to your attention in just a moment. I will. I, for, I meant to put a, a, a clip up there, but I didn't. But let me just show you what's going on here. Now, this is not articles. This is me writing this on the screen here, if you can see it. The Pope needs to get rid of Russia, in its opinion, okay? In order to fake a millennial reign, as I said. This is why the Vatican set up its own communion service in May of 2014. They are trying to pick up where Jesus left off in their diabolical way. All right, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you here. If the Vatican is looking at the 70th week of Daniel as being cut off in the midst of the week and saying that there's still three and a half years left, then it only seems logical why the Vatican then would take and go into the upper room above King David's tomb, put on his triple crown hat, and say to the world that he is Jesus Christ. 
Now, I know he did not literally from his mouth say that, but his actions is showing that as because the Catholic Church claims that every pope is the vicar of Christ, the substitute, in other words, the replacement for Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. So when he went in there, and according to their own news agency, it was men only that participated in the mass service that he did, his reenactment of the communion of Jesus and his 12 apostles. And by the way, you know, they have 70 cardinals as well. You know, so this is part of, you know, he, he tries to mimic everything that Yeshua did. All right, so he goes in there into the upper room and what's he trying to do? He's trying to pick up where they left off. He's trying to pick up where Jesus left off. In other words, he's trying to fulfill the other half of the week and then he knows that at, the, at that point there, then the millennial reign is supposed to start. At least that's from the writings that he's seeing. I know what you, I see those, I've seen those writings as well. So I know what he's looking at. But see, it's the two witnesses that are to come. That's what's supposed to happen next, not the Pope of Rome. Now, if you look at it in that light there, let's say this is, and, and this is, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm speculating on this. I think this is what he's got in mind. I think that's why he said what he said about the 2016 Christmas coming, that it won't be like it was. Why? Because if he did this in 2014, and you had the year 2014, one year, the year 2015, two years. Now you're in the year 2016. That's the third year. He's got to get in there and get rid of Russia in order to be able, by the year 2017 that comes around, he's got to be able to say to whoever he thinks he is that, okay, now we can have a millennial reign because we now have peace. This is what the Pope is trying to do. I, I mean, this is my opinion. I can't say it's right, but that's why he went there and he drank upon God's holy mountain, Mount Zion, and he did this. He went in there and had that communion in the upper room, and then, of course, the Catholic Church went down and they had another mass in King David's tomb. Special forces threw him out. And friends, I just got an email from Sister Yolanda. She, uh, she just sent me an email and said, Brother, you may have missed this. Israel National News just showed the other day the Catholic Church came again and they were having to throw the Jews out of the King David's tomb. They said they were coming there for a prayer service. The Jews were holding their ground. Do not let the Catholic Church in. You want to know why? Because I'll tell you why. I sat right there with Brother Joseph. He's a friend of mine there. He's an Orthodox Jew over the tomb of David there. He's not the leading rabbi, but he's the rabbi that greets the men that come in. And I warned him about what the Vatican is doing. I shared with him what Obadiah's prophecy said. And he was blown away in his mind about it. And I guess it did some good. So this time when the Catholic Church tried to come in, guess what happened? They stopped them. They at least tried to stop them anyway. The Israeli special forces were there. They knocked down one of the men that was holding a Taurus scroll, knocked the Torah scroll to the ground, and they arrested two of them and put them in prison. And the attorney, his name is Wolf, is standing there for them, interceding on their behalf. You know, it reminded me when I got that, that email from Sister Yolanda, and I want to thank you, Sister, for sending that. But you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of what God showed me in the vision about a year ago. When I was on Mount Zion, it was actually a dream, but I realize now a dream is a vision when you realize that it's beginning to come to pass. And the Lord showed me and said, spoke to me, wrote it in Hebrew on a stone like an amber fire and said, there's a man drinking upon my holy mountain. And then the fire come across the stone again and said, you are to remove him. And I'd been praying there on Mount Zion is where I was at. And I was looking all around, looking around, trying to find the man. And then I found him. And he's an evil looking man. And as he turned around and saw me coming, he had a wine glass in his hand, just like what the Pope would hold. And he poured it out on the ground. He says, I'm not drinking anymore. You know what? Now I know what the Lord meant when he said remove him. I never could understand what did he mean by remove him? Who am I? I'm nobody. 
But you know what? I can enlighten my brethren in Israel, my Orthodox brethren that don't know Yeshua as of yet, what the prophecies are saying. And God will use them to put a stop to these things on the mountain. Who knows what else will come? But I'm telling you, we're living in a very serious hour, friends, and we're about to see a war with Russia. I, I'm really beginning to think it's really going to happen. I can't say 100%, so I'm not prophesying that there's some war coming with Russia, but I believe there's a, there's a very great likelihood that there will be a war with Russia. It may not be a long one, but it will be a war with Russia so that the Pope can say they've conquered Russia as well, so that the Pope of Rome can finally say he has brought peace. After the war begins, then he will call for a peace. Watch what he's doing. Watch what's happening in Rome. Watch what's happening in Israel. Especially watch Israel. It's all coming together, friends. And it won't be long. They'll build that third temple there. You know, it'd be okay if it was a, if it was a temple for all nations, if it was a prayer house for all nations, but that's not what they're going to do it for. That pontiff wants to be that head leader there. He wants to show the world that he is the, that he is the Christ. Do you not know? And this is also from, uh, from um, Alberta Rivera, that every cardinal in the Catholic Church has Jewish roots. They make sure of it. There's not a single cardinal elected unless they can prove that he's got a Jewish root descent in him. You're going to learn more about this in the very coming days. Pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for our safety because I'm telling you something. We're irritating them really badly. And stand with us. If you, really, if you believe that what we're doing is of God, I ask you and encourage you to support this work. I don't say that lightly because we can't do it without you. But if you believe that what we're doing is to try to, to, to get this to the people. And by the way, I'm not just saying that either. The Lord is, I can't speak to you much, but God has dealt with my heart on something and the, the Jewish people are about to know more about the Messiah. And that's not a joke, friends. God bless you. Thank you for watching here on live stream. You can support us if you would like to, israelinewslive.org or israelreturns.com. We love you. We thank you for standing with us on this. God bless you. Shalom.